All right, here's an interesting integration by parts problem, and I uh, want to integrate the integral of secant cubed x dx. What's interesting about it, though, happens towards the end of the problem, so I'm going to try to go through this one a little quicker than usual. All right, so as I'm integrating secant cubed x dx, these are some of the things that I have in my toolbox here. I know that tangent squared is secant squared minus 1 from trigonometry, just a nice little Pythagorean identity. I know the derivative of tangent is secant squared. If I was to integrate secant, I would get this natural log absolute value secant x plus tangent x plus c. So I know that I can integrate secant, I can integrate tangent, I can differentiate tangent and differentiate secant. So when I look at this here, what I do is I think of secant cubed as secant x times secant squared x, and so I do this little integration by part substitution. Let u be equal to this first part, dv is secant squared x dx. This becomes easy to differentiate. Derivative of secant is secant tangent, and then the integral of secant squared, of course, is tangent. So if I differentiate tangent, I get secant squared. Okay, so what I want to do next then is take this substitution rewrite this in terms of this integration by parts and see what happens. Okay, I'm going to write that on the board and come back and do that. Okay, so when I take this integration by parts here and I go u times v, all right, I have my secant cubed, so I substitute this in here and I have u times v secant x times tangent x minus the integral of v times du. I'm going to have tangent x times secant x tangent x, so I have secant times tangent squared x dx, and it looks like mm, things are getting a little worse, but what I want to do next is take this Pythagorean identity, substitute for tangent squared, and see what we get from there. So I'm going to come right back and do that. Okay, so I make that substitution. Tangent squared is secant squared minus 1. Okay, and then I multiply secant times secant squared, and I get secant cubed. Secant times 1 is secant right there, and then I'm, I'm doing each of these as separate integrals and distributing this negative sign across. That's why that's plus. So I've multiplied this out using that Pythagorean identity. It looks like things are getting worse, but they're actually not, so I just want to keep going with this. Okay, I see I have this integral, secant x. I know I can integrate that. That's just going to be natural log secant x plus tangent x minus this integral that I have right here. So it looks like, gee, things didn't get any better. I'm back where I started from, but things did actually get better because this side is actually the integral of secant cubed x dx is equal to all this minus the integral of secant cubed x dx. This is just some algebraic expression. So what I'm going to do is add that to both sides. So when I add this expression to both sides over here, I end up with 2 times the integral of secant cubed x dx is equal to secant x tangent x plus natural log, absolute value, secant x plus tangent x. And then all I have to do is multiply both sides by one half, and I end up with the integral of secant cubed x dx is equal to one half all of this right here, which I'm going to write out here for you in just a second. Okay, so when I do that, I end up with secant cubed x dx is one half this whole quantity right here. I could distribute that one half to each of those terms if I want, but I won't do that. So I've got one half this whole quantity, and then right at the very end here, because it's an indefinite integral, I add on my plus c. Okay, so interesting problem. Takes a little while to get there. This is the correct uh, substitution for integration by parts that you want to use. Looks at first like things are getting worse, but if you just follow this through, get everything in terms of secant down here, you end up with that same integral you started with over here, and that turns out to be a good thing as far as your techniques of integration go, because you can add that to both sides, so you get two of those, secant cubed x dx is equal to all this, both sides by one half, there's the integral that you're looking for. Secant cubed x dx is equal to this thing right here plus c. So I like this problem just because of the last step right here, and so that's why I tried to save some time here by cutting out some of the talking in between. But that's what you get for the integral of secant cubed x dx.